Hello everyone. This is Jan Chromi and together we will continue the course Interdisciplinary Approaches to Language and its Use. In this presentation we will focus on how the languages of a bilingual interact with each other during language processing. In the psycholinguistic literature on bilingualism there has been a long-standing debate on the nature of language processing in bilinguals. The fundamental question is whether bilinguals process language selectively or not. Selective processing means that only one of the languages is active and processed when the bilingual engages in a monolingual communication. Non-selective processing, on the other hand, entails the activation of both languages. In other words, the idea behind non-selective processing is that bilinguals' different languages intervene while processing of one of the languages takes place. One of the studies arguing for the non-selective processing in bilinguals is a paper by Michael Spivy and Viorica Marian, Crosstalk between Native and Second Languages, Partial Activation of an Irrelevant Lexicon. The authors examined English-Russian bilinguals using eye tracking. They presented the participants with a whiteboard with nine equal squares. In the center there was a black cross. The participants were always presented with a task such as put the marker below the cross. Importantly, there were two conditions. In one condition, an interlingual distractor was used. In case of the sentence, put the marker below the cross, there was also a stamp on the board, which is called marka in Russian. This was called the interlingual distractor present condition. In a control condition, there were other things on the board whose name in Russian did not resemble the name in English. The experiment had a Russian part and an English part, and the authors always measured the proportion of trials in which participants looked at the distractor objects in the display, for example on the stamp, when they were told put the marker below the cross. Here we can see the results. In both the Russian and English version of the experiment, the participants tended to look at the interlingua distractor significantly more than on the control object. In other words, when they heard the sentence put the marker below the cross in the English version, in about 30% of cases they also looked at the stamp. The control condition has been attended to to a lesser degree. We can see that this difference is even more pronounced in the Russian version. However, in 2003, Viorica Marian and Michael Spivy published a follow-up study which aimed to account for various problems related to the first study. This study was similar in the procedure to the previous one, but it differed considering two factors which were not previously analyzed. One important factor was the language mode. In the 1999 study, the participants were aware that they participate in a study on bilingualism. An obvious argument against the 1999 study was that the bilingual languages were activated because of the bilingual mode of the situation. Therefore, in the 2003 study, Marian and Spivy changed the situation so that the whole Russian experiment was in Russian and it was administered by a native Russian speaker, and the English experiment was in English and administered by a native English speaker. In other words, the language mode in the two experiments was rather monolingual. Also, in the 2003 study, the experimental conditions differed. As in the 1999 study, the control condition with no distractor and the between language condition with an interlingual distractor were used, but there were also two more conditions. In the first one, the authors used the within language distractor, which was an object whose name in the language of the experiment had a phonological overlap with the name of the critical object. For example, uh, it may be the words like boot and book, or plug and plum. In the second, uh, second condition, they used both the within language distractor and the interlingual or between language distractor simultaneously. Here we can see the results. The upper table summarizes results of English experiment and the lower table summarizes results of the Russian experiment. In the tables there are percentages of trials in which bilingual participants made eye movements to the competitor items or corresponding fillers. You can see 
then the scores are generally lower in the first experiment, where the between language distractor was attended to in about 30% of trials in both experiments. In the 2003 study, the score was 18% for English and 8% for Russian in the between language condition. In the English experiment, there was a significant difference between the fixations of between language competitor and the fixations of control filler object, but this difference was not present in the Russian experiment. One of the explanations may be that the participant's native language was Russian and they were fluent English speakers, but English was still their only second language. In other words, it seems that their native language was activated when they were using their second language, which is the case in the English experiment. On the other hand, there was no clear sign of the activation of the second language when they were using their first language as in Russian experiment. The authors thus conclude that the magnitude of the between language competition effects may vary across first and second languages and may be mediated by a number of factors such as stimuli, language background and language mode. Before we will conclude this presentation, I have one reading tip for you. If you are interested in the parallel activation of the two languages in bilinguals, you should read a recent meta-analytic study by Justin Clauro and Anna Schwartz. In this study, results of 44 previous studies are analyzed together, which gives the uh, author solid ground for making generalizations. If you enjoyed the presentations, we would be glad if you would like them on YouTube. That is all from me now. See you next time.